I stand among fallen comrades. The cost of the battle will take their toll. But in the absence of all hope, I will remain vigilant. I will not fail, my brethren. I will make any sacrifice that is necessary. Our time is now. Go, 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 go. Let's move, let's move, let's move. All right, come on, we're moving, we're moving. Go, thank you. Get him, get him. The battle is here. Uh, we're done. Line up, line up, line up, please. 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 Oh, Hello guys and welcome to Server Smash. I'll be your uh, main caster today, uh, Farah, with the main camera. Today with me I have my Anycast team, uh, starting with my co-caster. Say hello, Odins. How's it going, guys? Odins Pride, uh, from hailing from Connery TR for the Dread Legion. I'll be co-casted for you tonight. Looking forward to a really great match from both these servers. Uh, and your... I'm... I'm Redland Bastard. I'm going to be the third caster today. I'm going to be telling Fair where to look, where the big fights are, and keeping track of the score. I'm from uh, VS on Connery from DPSO. Uh, when you say hello, Dot, sir, who are you? What do you do? Yeah, I'm Dot, uh, the main lead org for uh, PSO pickup, which encompasses, you know, the uh, public pickups, outfit pickups, and obviously the uh, server smash. Okay, and yeah, I'm, I'm Luya. I'm the head EU admin. Uh, yeah, I look after EU servers. Uh, Lance? I'm Lanzer. I'm the head North America admin. So both of these are my babies fighting together. I hail from Connery, the Devil Dogs. Hoorah. Okay. So, Dot, sir, uh, we need to move along quickly. What is Server Smash? For anyone who's watching the stream for the first time, you're like, what is it? What's going on? Ser service match is a community organized and driven event where you know p participants from different servers meet on the planet side to test server otherwise known as pts to battle it out in games within a set number of players to give a you know a competitive feel to it service match is designed around massive coordinated forces and combined arms warfare spanning entire continents and it is planet side the way planet side is really meant to be played okay and I guess um, we'll get to what the stakes are, but um, we'll go straight into um, a video made by Redland with expl explanation of the map and who's starting where, and then we'll go straight into our interviews with our two reps today for the two servers. Today's match takes place on the continent of Ezimir, with Matherson fighting as Vanu from the southern warp gate, and Watterson starting from the eastern warp gate as Terran Republic. Each base is worth a set number of points, with large facilities being worth more than outposts and small bases. There are a total of 91 points available on the map. The server with the most points at the end of two hours is declared the winner. There are three biolabs on Ezimir, all worth five points each. Ymir Biolab on the far eastern lane is neutral at the beginning of the match. Biolabs are protected from air and armor by a shield, and fights to take them rely almost exclusively on good infantry play. They are also notoriously difficult to capture, even if the defenders are outnumbered. There are also three amp stations on the map. Most amp stations have a single capture point in the center, defended by two outlying shield generators that attackers must destroy to gain access. However, Freyer Amp Station, which starts as neutral on the northwestern lane, is arranged differently from the others. Freyer has three capture points spread along the inner walls of the facility, and capturing a point gives the attackers a dedicated spawn room inside the facility itself. There's only one tech plan on Esimir. An isotech plant is well entrenched behind layers of protective bases. Tech plants are the largest single facilities in Planet Side 2, and grant the owner the ability to spawn main battle tanks. Attackers may methodically take down the outlying generators to gain access to the point, or drop infantry from above and try and hold the point with no outside support.
The octagon is a major choke point and crossroads for the continent, and starts the match neutral. While point capture here requires well-coordinated infantry tactics, the base is very vulnerable to air and armor attacks, and leaves little place to hide for unsupported infantry. Esme Munitions Corp takes two towers and combines them into one base. The surrounding territory is very unfriendly to Sunder Replacement, and while infantry are usually protected inside the cat points, any movement along the base's many catwalks leaves them vulnerable to air and armor. These are the major fights that will start this service match. It will be up to the winner of these first battles to try and capitalize on their position and resource gain to push the enemy back. Many of these first fights become much harder once the base is owned by the enemy, so attacking the bases later in the match is a risky gamble to take. Alright guys, that was our uh, awesome kind of newbie friendly video done by Redland Bastard, so uh, kudos to him for making that for us. So for right now, I'll pass off to Lanzer and Luyer for our server rep uh, interview about this upcoming match. Alright, I've got Matheson and... Alright, wait. Right. <laughs> That's me, man. I'm the Gator. I'm from the Vindicators VS and Matheson uh, server rep. Not the actual force commander today. Today's force commander is Comrade Virtuanov from Goku, also plays VS on Matheson. And uh, I just want to say, this guy's been there since the start of the server. Uh, a lot of our folks that are platoon leading and squad leading tonight have been here since beta dropped. And we know each other, we know each other well. Uh, multiple alerts uh, a week. He uh, is a sharp guy, he understands the game, understands moving large, large numbers around. Oh, that's awesome, man. And what outfit does he have from? Uh, again, Goku from uh, Yes Matheson. Gotcha. So tell me about Matheson. What is what is Matheson's play style? Uh, all aggressive, all in, and uh, letting everybody know all, all the way. Go big or go home. I don't really know how to say it, pretty much. Okay, that's enough said about that. So tell me, when when it comes to server smashes, when it comes to this sort of events, do you all favor separate outfits doing specific things, or are you more of a combined arms, put them all together, melting pot? Uh, well, I mean, at, at the very core of it, you know, the way this game is played is the same across the board. If you restrict yourself uh, artificially to playing in one specific uh, fashion, you're not going to be as effective. Uh, we, we'd like to think each and every one of our platoons could accomplish any task given to them. Uh, regardless, it's going to involve fast redeploys, uh, force management, force balance, sending single squads out to start fires. Once the fire catches, reinforcement, reinforcing it, and then uh, pulling back as, as needed. Gotcha. So when it comes to outfits, though, like Goku is infantry and draft and, and all that sort of stuff, do you all compartmentalize your force that way, or uh, do you melt them together? Uh, uh, again, a absolutely not. It's it's fully expected when we go into these things that everybody's expected to be able to perform any single function, whether it's uh, fast movement to respond to something, uh, armor swarm. We've... Um, We've made a little bit of an effort to put some of our pilots together, but not not in a uh, uh, not a fashion that's going to be detrimental to the the overall strategy. But um, again, everybody's expected to, to play the hammer as needed. Uh, the initial the opening five minutes is uh, you know each platoon down to the squad level has a very specific function, but I'm not gonna, not going to go into what those functions are. So, gotcha, gotcha. Ned. Tell me about Matherson's view of the merger. Do y'all what do y'all think about it? Is it necessary? Uh, I mean, prime time is amazing. It's always been good, but uh, off hours, it's it's looking for fights. Um, we're all still concerned about having being the largest server. How that's going to play an effect on lag and uh, uh, you know the net code and, and and all that other stuff that causes problems when you get so many people. Gotcha. Well, thank you very much, and that's that's Matheson. Okay, and I'll quickly introduce Waterson, which we have Master Chafe, which is our outfit rep. Uh, Chafe, so again, who's your force commander? What's, ex what's right. their experience and sort of where do they come from? What outfit? Um, I am our force commander. I'm the uh, EXO of Zen of Onslaught. I've been playing this game for about a year and a half now and I've been leading for about a year. Um, I've been 
you know, been leading Zen of Onslaught in competitive scrims. I was in the uh, leadership group on the last Watterson versus Matherson scrim, which uh, we pulled some uh, interesting map work. And yep, yep. Um, we are looking forward to uh, outplaying you guys on the map again. I was going to say, oh, it's, it's, wow, shit talking, um, smack talking already, brilliant. Um, okay, so what's the sort of feeling? For the match that Watson's having, and what, what what do you guys actually feel about the merge? Are you are you happy for it? Are you a bit apprehensive? Are you looking forward to welcoming or dominating your new water, uh, Matheson overlords? Or um, we're excited for the merge. Um, we're always willing to welcome more people to the Watterson server. Um, we you know we've have we have a lot of smaller outfits, but are very tight knit. So I think it wouldn't be too difficult for us to cut swaths through the uh, Zergs amongst Mas Matherson and uh, make a name for ourselves on the battlefields over there. We just have to, you know, start from square one and get everyone else to recognize the Watterson outfit names. And one last question. Um, do you think well, the Watterson playstyle is going to transition well enough into server smash? I know you said you played Matherson before, but are you going to try sort of the same thing again? Are you going to mix it up and try something a little bit different? Um... The last time we played, we were, you know, we're sticking on two last lanes, so it's really an entirely new game. Um, with our outfits, though, we have a lot of experience of fighting in large numbers as a small group rather than in large numbers as large numbers. So we aren't, aren't really taking out of outside of our elements as long as we're sticking together with the people we know to, we know and we play with often. Okay. So I think we're uh, we're, we're confident that there's, that there's going to be a really good fight. In these next few hours. Nice, and I think that's everything. So, I'm hand it back over to our casting pair, Farah. Awesome, thanks so much. So, uh, you and me, Odins, we need to talk about this map and make it clear for everyone what's going on. Certainly. We have the map of Esmir, as we can see over Luke. Some territory is neutral NC, uh, that's third faction. Uh, as has already been described in Redland's video, uh, Terran in the eastern warp gate will be Waterson, and VS Vanu in the East Esmir southern warp gate will be Matherson. Uh, for this game format we have a point system, as we see here now in the stream. Major facilities are worth 5 points, small facilities are worth 1 point, large facilities are worth 2 points, large facility basically having you know more than 1 capture point, like 3 capture points, and because the octagon is unique in that it has 4 capture points but isn't a major facility, it is going to be worth 3 points. In essence, um, it means that there is an odd number of capture points. Uh, the not in play area in the north, that's just to make it balanced, and um, the map is as is, is balanced as we can possibly make it in terms of resources, in terms of point distribution and gameplay, so we're really looking forward to kind of a fun thing here. Um, so, Odin, if you were a force commander here, what tactical things would you look out for? Well, it really depends. Each warp gate provides their own opportunities and own weaknesses, so it really depends. If I was going to be on the southern warp gate, the first thing that I'm looking at is Esmir Munitions Co. That, to me, Sorry, is... one sec. Yes, yep. I realize the colors are back to front, guys. It was a graphic, and then, surprise, the warp gate's changed. Please continue. So, yeah, like I was saying, the best, the first, the two things that stand out to me are... The, right off the bat, you only have two fights, even though there are five lanes that you can fight over. Uh, so, But at the beginning, the only places that you can actually push for are the Octagon or the Esmir Munitions and Rhyme Analytics lane. So to me, it would really depend on, hey, do I send all of my forces to those two spots that I can actually do something about for the first four minutes? Or do I set up, say, and get my forces ready in Ymir Biolab or maybe Isotech Plant or Freyer Amp Station and prepare? Sure. Maybe, yes, it would take a little bit of time, but if I set up correctly and provide the correct defense, I know that I'll be able to actually take those. So it really depends on how you prioritize where your forces are going right off the bat. Well, yeah, some of the opening things we're going to be looking for is that there will be the initial rush for the biolab, the initial rush for the amp station. You can see some interdiction. We won't go too much into this because of the, uh, we're kind of short on time. We've only got about five minutes roughly to the stream starts. Um, one thing that might be interesting to spot is that 
In previous casts, we have seen an enemy team from the northeastern warp gate interdict one of the three capture points at Esmer Munitions Corp, and by holding that, they actually prevented the southern warp gate from starting the hack and ice and mining operation, and because of that, they got the tech plant for free with absolutely no interference. So I'm really interested to see if, uh, you know, that's perhaps what Waterson tries to try, uh, you know, go with, or to see whether or not um, Matherson pushes into Rhyme Analytics and tries to bypass Freya Amp Station and go for Manny Biolab. So um, it's all to play for here, and tactically, I'm, I'm going to be super interested. And, and finally, you know, the Amp Station and the Biolab, they are also significantly important because they offer air resources, and air resources in this game, now that they actually cost something again, thank you very much SOE, um, you could see one team being bled off by the other very fast, and I guess that leads into the air game, how much air do you bring? So, we're just gonna um, end our pre-game show, and we'll go into our light game show, so I'm just gonna show the uh, server smash intro, and then uh, we'll have some match predictions, and we'll wait for our dev to start to our alert. We'll be right back. Wonderful. <laughs> 